Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I've got a very fun experiment I'm going to do today, and I have no idea how it's going to turn out. We're going to try to get an eGPU via Oculink to work with this very, very low-cost mini PC that we look at quite frequently here on the channel, the GMK Tech G3 Plus. And GMK Tech recently came out with a small external GPU that I reviewed just recently, and this has an AMD RX 7600M XT inside with eight gigabytes of video memory. And this eGPU supports Oculink in addition to USB 4. Now the mini PC here doesn't support either of those things natively, but what it has inside is a free NVMe slot. Now before the storage here was occupied by the, in, the storage that the computer came with, but these computers have a second M SATA slot. So I have an M SATA drive here that I imaged uh, the Windows drive over to. So we're gonna boot from this drive and we're going to install in this video, this Oculink NVMe adapter that should allow us to connect the GPU to the mini PC. And we will see how well this works. There's not a lot of practical use cases for something like this. It's just kind of a fun experiment. But these machines are a little more expandable than you might think. And what's nice about the design of this particular computer is that the top comes off so you can very easily get the cable out to plug it in to the GPU. So I'm excited to give this a shot here and see how it works out. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the mini PC here with my own funds and the GPU came in free of charge from GMK Tech but no one is paying for this review. No one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see how this experiment will turn out. All right, so our first step here is to install the Oculink adapter. Now remember, I had a drive in here that I took out. So I'm just going to grab the screw here that is on the pedestal for this thing and we'll pull that out. And then what we're going to do, I'll give you the overhead, is just pop this in like we would an NVMe drive. We'll slot it in there like so and push it down. Now these adapters are available on Amazon and many other places. They're not that expensive. There's not much to them actually because really it's just an adapter to get Oculink to work with the, uh, the bus of the system here. So it's kind of like having a PCI slot on your little mini PC. And next, I'm gonna take my Oculink cable here and just plug it in. I'm gonna to have to leave the top of the case off because of the cable coming out, but I'm sure you could probably Dremel a hole or something in there to be able to fit it out. And then we'll connect the Oculink to the GPU here. And that is pretty much the installation process. We're gonna to have to install drivers. I'm not liking how it's putting some pressure on the uh, the cable or the connector here. So that might be an issue. So we'll see what happens when we get going with this. But again, this is mostly an experiment to see if this is even going to work at all. But that is pretty much the install process minus the drivers. So why don't we connect power now and see what happens? All right, so everything is plugged in. Again, I have no idea what's going to happen when I throw the power switch on here. Now, I want to note that I am running the HDMI cable out of the eGPU and not from the HDMI output on the mini PC. And that's because for the best performance, you always want your video coming out of your GPU. Now, when we have tried this, and here comes the power button, when we have tried this on other devices that are designed for this kind of thing, uh, we will see actually the GPU power up the display as it's doing right now. Look at that. Um, when it boots. So, so far so good here because really this GPU is connected to the bus of the computer. There's no Thunderbolt or USB 4 connection in the middle here. We are booting right up to Windows and this GPU is considered part now of the system bus because that is how Oculink works and you can also see just how simple that uh, adapter board was. So let me get logged into Windows here and we will get the drivers installed and then we'll see what the performance is like when we've got a very low powered computer driven by a pretty powerful GPU. Now I just went over to the AMD website and grabbed their driver package and it has detected the GPU successfully. So what we're going to do is get the latest version of the AMD Radeon Adrenaline Edition drivers installed on the computer here so that when we start doing some benchmarks and games, we'll have the best performance that we can possibly squeeze out of this little device. As this is installing, you should know that you could probably buy three or four of these mini PCs for what one of these GPUs costs. So this is not the most practical solution. But one thing you can do with Oculink beyond just external GPUs 
is attach something like this, which gives you a full-on PCI Express slot that you can plug any card into. So it's not just for graphics. You could have a network adapter, like a 10 gig adapter or some other crazy PCI card. Video capture, for example, could go on here. The one challenge with this, and we did a video on this recently, is that you have to have an external power supply attached to this to power the card that you're plugging into it. So it gets a little, a little crazy as you're working uh, up with additional hardware. But I like this solution just because this GPU is all self-contained. It does have a pretty large power supply, but it sits on the floor. It's not as crazy looking here beyond the fact that we've got cables coming out of the top of our computer. So let me let these uh, drivers finish up here and then we'll take a look and see what kind of performance we can expect out of the GPU. All right, our first test here is Cyberpunk 2077. I have it right now set at 1080p and we're running with the uh, settings preset of ray tracing low. We're gonna try it without ray tracing in a minute. But at this resolution, I'm getting about 50 to 45 frames per second, not near 60, unfortunately, but that's a very playable frame rate if you were looking to play some games on this crazy setup. I expect when it goes into the outdoor realm here to do a little better. Here we're getting close to 60 frames per second, nice reflections in the water there. And when I ran this earlier at 4K, it was doing about 30 frames per second, 30 to 45 or so. So you can really crank out some decent graphics performance. Our uh, CPU is totally maxed out here, so we probably would be doing better, um, but the CPU in this situation is the bottleneck because this is a budget PC. Um, but our GPU utilization is only at around 62%, which shows you that we do have a definite CPU bottleneck here. So there's going to be some realistic uh, limitations on what you can get for performance out of this. And this GPU, of course, would do much better on a more powerful mini PC. But here you can see our average frames per second across the test here was 46.31. And what I'm going to do now is turn off the ray tracing and see if we can get a little bit more squeezed out. So it looks like the ray tracing is not going to make a difference here. It is all the CPU bottleneck here. We're at the same resolution at the low settings now and I'm seeing performance very close to what we had earlier, just with slightly less image quality. So again, you know, there's, there's limitations here with the processor, um, but the fact that this game is running at all on here, I think says something. So there you go, about the same results here running at low settings. Let's take a look at another game. So here we've got Red Dead Redemption 2 running, and right now I'm at 1080p at the lowest settings and I'm only getting about 30 to 45 frames per second. It gets a little better when we're out of the more complex environments, but anytime it's got to render in a building or something else, it slows down again. And the reason here is that we've got a CPU bottleneck, just like we had in the last game. So right now my CPU is at 100%, but our GPU utilization here is hovering in the 30 percentile range. So we could be doing a lot better if we had a faster processor. And of note, um, this game actually runs at a good 35 to 50 something frames per second on some of the newer, more powerful mini PCs that I look at with Ryzen and Intel chips just running off their internal GPUs. So just connecting a GPU doesn't always get you immediate performance gains here. And this game's a great example of that because so much is dependent on the CPU in this equation as well. All right, so here's a game that benefits from the GPU significantly. This is Doom Eternal. We are running this at 1080p at the lowest settings, and I currently have ray tracing off, and we're getting about 128 frames per second right here. When you get into a more open area or an area where there's more rendering that has to happen, I'll, I'll wander my way over there in a second here, uh, it does slow down a little bit, but we're slowing down into the 90 frames per second territory. So this is a game that greatly benefits from the GPU. And right now my CPU is at 100%, but uh, the GPU is much more utilized here. We're sometimes hovering into the 70 percentile range. So we'd have even more performance, again, if we had uh, a faster CPU on this machine, but this game certainly benefits tremendously uh, from this GPU being attached. With ray tracing enabled, we do take a little bit of a performance hit, but not a significant one. So this is an area too where the GPU can uh, provide a real benefit here on a super low-end PC. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 6,449, but you do have to dig into these scores a bit. 
So take a look at the G3 Plus, the same mini PC without the GPU attached, and we only got a score of 450 there. So you can see what a big boost in performance you get with the GPU when you've got something that can take advantage of the GPU. And when you've got a CPU bottleneck like we've got here, that of course hits your overall score on this test, but also impacts gaming. So for example, if we look at the VivoBook S14, which is a laptop that we had in the review of the GPU that I did a few weeks ago, you can see its score is much higher, 9,421. The graphic scores are about the same, but because it has a much faster CPU, it does better both on this benchmark and in the games that we tested on it. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is how well we can run a large language model. So I've got Olama running here. I downloaded the 8 billion parameter DeepSeq distilled model, and we'll just ask it a question. And there you go. So you can see that the GPU is handling all of the compute and all of the memory usage, and it's cranking stuff out here really quickly. So this is another example that you can get some interesting stuff to happen on a mini PC when you are using that GPU to its full potential here. Our CPU is certainly maxed out, probably doing some other stuff related to this task, but uh, the GPU here is generating text at a very good clip, certainly a lot faster than this little computer could do on its own. The entire model is in the GPU memory, and you can see here about 82% of the GPU's compute power was used to just generate that text. Good stuff. So there you go, not the most practical solution, but it works, and it actually works much better than I expected. There wasn't a lot of hacking here to get this to work beyond pulling the hard drive out and putting the adapter in. And when we booted it up, as you saw, it was just plug and play. And once your drivers are going there, as far as this computer is concerned, this GPU is on the PCI bus. Now again, there are more uses beyond graphics. You can get one of these things here and just hook up any PCI Express card you have laying around and you get very good performance out of this Oculink because you are connecting directly to the bus. So fun experiment here, super cheap mini PC with an external GPU, and hopefully this gave you some ideas for things that you might be able to try out with the mini PCs that you have playing around the house. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.